What's up guys? Mr. Wicked Shot back again here with another video and in today's audit we'll be exercising our first amendment and second amendment right and we'll be doing that today at the Curtisville Public Safety Center and um, we'll take a look around the property we'll go inside at some point I've never seen one like this so far it is half um, police station um, and have fire station now this city has a police station that's responsible for the city and then there's another one a couple of blocks down that's for the county itself um, we're going to check out the lobby the um, pretty much this whole area I'll give you a look around here and check out and see if you know or a right to take photo videos and open carry is respected to the you know see how these guys do And there you have the sign that I typically see on um, any police station you go to. Um, you can't carry inside. Um, you can carry on the property on the outside. Um, but yeah, you can't go inside of it, obviously. The lobby is open, but because I'm carrying right now, which I'll show you, you can see it. Right there on my hip. Yeah, so I won't be going inside, but I'll be outside and, you know, I'll pretty much be where my audit extends to. By the time I need to go inside, I will put the firearm in my car and then I'll make my way in. And once I come back out, I'll grab it back from the car and I'll put it back where it is, open. Um, yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and, you know, smash a like and subscribe if you enjoy it and want to see more. All right. like to take the time to appreciate and pay respect to the flag I do not need I stand at attention because I appreciate what this country has offered me and done for me as an immigrant and um, you know I appreciate those before that are still fighting to keep all those rights and allow me the freedom that I have today and all the benefits I have today of being an American. Check out the stuff here. It's pretty cool. I think these are all fallen heroes. Um, both on the firefighter side and on the police side. This building was erected on um, April, I think. Um, April 2011. And I gotta tell you, man, these guys were on this place good, man. You can tell they're proud of it and they love it. They treat it like home because it's always clean looking always always clean that section over there is for the firefighters and then this section here is the city police
one of the nicer looking uh, fire station in the area. Nice. Favorite things to do. Love to see it. Hey, how's it going, bud? I don't know, man. Um, is this back area open to the public or is yes, no? Where's the public access cut off? Like uh, <coughs> the front door, basically. Just the front door? Yes, sir. Okay, but they can. They're free to like roam no, this no, area, right? People want to come in here, look around. Yes. They can. Okay. Yes, sir. But right here, from here, probably to I guess probably to that. I mean, if people just want to come around and look around. And look around, they can. But as far as people just walking in, oh, without okay. being invited, you know. Oh, kinda, so here is um, <clears throat> authorized access, but it's public, right, it's still yeah, allowed. Yeah. It, okay. They, like the, the police and the firemen are, are remotes to the gate. Oh. So they can let themselves in and out. Okay, okay, okay. But that, now, if people want to... Come in here and, and just look, look around at the building, look yeah. at the fire trucks, whatever. Yeah, they can. Welcome. Yes, okay, sir. but if they want to get back here, that's where they need um, authorization yes, or somebody yes, to kind of like uh, walk them through, right, basically. Right. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. I've I've never been over here since the building was constructed, um, so I kind of wanted to take the time and kind of come check it out. Yeah. Typically, what I do, I go around to public buildings. Um, and just film and just kind of look at the equipment and stuff like that, kind of showcase the guys that's like... And, and I'll be honest with you, the, the reason this is mostly restricted mm. is because down here, they'll keep like evidence oh. outside and stuff like that. Really? Okay. Yeah. So, so, you know, you, you really got to be... That's... Okay, so that's... If, so probably if it wasn't being shared by the... You know, with the police... Know, like bicycles, uh, windy unit. No air condition units, whatever they right, do. right. That a key for it. Somebody yeah. might try to yeah. take it off. Yep, that makes Somebody sense. So I'm assuming if this building wasn't shared with the the police station, it would probably be more oh, accessible. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. And that's why I choose this building to kind of come check out because it's different. Not a lot of um, station is shared. So I thought it's kind of unique and yeah. kind of basically see how you guys operate and treat the public. And so I put you guys really at the top. I think military at the top and firefighters second and then I would put law enforcement third you know so right. you know just of my whole world ap appreciation for you guys though what you say the name once again Jim Jim, Jim. Jim. I appreciate Jim Marlon 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 yes sir okay, Marlon no problem
How you doing? Um, I have a question. You might be able to answer, but if not, um, you could probably ask uh, one of the men in blue for me. So I typically like to go around, well, part of my job, but I know I'm an independent journalist, and I usually go to public buildings where the public's allowed and just kind of film how these guys operate and treat the public and just pretty much show them how you exercise your right in a peaceful way and be respectful at the same time. So typically I do two audits, the First Amendment and the Second. But I always kind of check, look for signs and stuff like that because I'm about like following laws and stuff like that and not trying to create an issue or initiate contact. So um, I saw the door, it says, um, Firearm prohibited only by um, authorized person, which, you know, law enforcement. So I wanted to know if that sign is extended to the lobby or the entire property. It's just the building. Oh, you can't come inside the building. But you can carry outside on the property. Okay. All right, that's um, that's good to know. I went as soon as I saw the sign, I went back and put it in the cab. Like, I'm not trying to fight federal law today or, or get um, harassed or anything. So I just put it up and just decided to just look around. When they built it, we never, I, I wasn't able to take the time to come and check it out. And I always thought it was pretty cool, how you know the building is split in two and how well maintained it's been since when they put it up. I, I guess I don't remember how long ago, but it feels like yesterday. Every time you pass and you look at it. You know, look, the air is so clean. It's like one of the cleanest, well-run buildings I've ever seen. So my thing is kind of to show what it really typical American cities look like, which is 99% of the time, not like what you see on the web. So, and you guys have done well to kind of reflect what I thought and what I wanted them to see. I think I just came in and nobody bothered me. And a lot of what you see on the web is the opposite. As soon as you come out, even though they should know that you're allowed and you're allowed to, you know, they'll try to say, hey, we have sensitive information over there. You can't record or look and it's like, come on, it's common sense. If the public is allowed in the area, it's like seeing another lot to look across there. Like, you know, whatever you're recording, which you're allowed to, is an extension of your body, you know, so you can't tell someone, you know, they're trespassing by looking across into a private area. You know, if, if you have stuff that's private sensitive, you cover it up so that they can't see it. But it's like seeing that not, someone not allowed to look at your property. They can't look at your property. They can't even take photos if they want to, as long as they don't come on your property and do it. So that misconception that people have is what my goal is to try to kind of diminish and kind of bridge the gap so people have a better respect for what you guys do and see that, yeah, don't follow the left woke media and all that stuff and the narrative that they're trying to drive that you know it's us against them or you know our public officials especially law enforcement just out there trying to violate you pretty much and strip your rights away and stuff like that you know so you know i would give you guys an a plus man like i was outside for quite a bit um nobody gave me an issue went over to the fire station looked around guys was pretty pretty respectful and professional the same thing and um yeah, you don't see that the type of person have an issue being, with, being on camera anyway, but if you come across anybody like me, you call himself, we call ourselves, well, I call myself an independent journalist and an auditor and a defender of the Constitution. A lot of guys that do this stuff, they're looking for the negative reaction. So that's the point I was trying to make. They're looking for confrontation when they go out the field. Typically, they're looking for that as well. More, not all of them, but a lot of them need that back and forth because that's how they get the views. My, so my videos tend to not have any of that because that's not what I'm looking for. But if you have an issue with somebody recording, the best you can do, especially if it's an auditor, ignore them. If you ignore them, they'll go away because they're not getting, they're not getting the feed that they want. But people just like seeing this stuff and they always, you know, you guys can't see the message, but I get tons of just let you know, even if you don't hear it from people a lot, people respect you when you respect them and treat the public as same because you guys know, you get paid by the public, they're pretty much the boss. So you, it's like being rude to your boss. That wouldn't make any sense, you know. And I appreciate you being professional. Uh, what's your name? Sarah. 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 So um, I appreciate you. My name is uh, Marlon. I run a business down not too far from here, me and my wife. You, you get your nails done? You do nails and stuff? No?
They'll have time, all right. Well, if you ever need to get your nails done, that's the best place in the boat hill. And um, I'll make sure my wife give you a nice discount for being so professional and respectful, all right? Okay, thank you. You have a good one, all right? Come back during Christmas and decorate. Huh? I said you can come back during Christmas where you can decorate. Oh, really? Yep. I'm looking. I was waiting for Halloween to get past so I can go right to Christmas. I'm all decorated for Halloween. Really? I'm, I'm just amazed how clean this place is. It's, you could look like you could eat off the floor. It's like eight years old, right, this building? Like, You, two years? Oh, April. April 2012. Okay, okay, so yeah, it is around eight years, okay. No, it's gonna be nine years this year. Okay, that's pretty nice, man. That's. I've been to a lot of public buildings, man, all over the boat hill, and I haven't seen one this clean. It tells you guys, like, treat it like your home and, and, and um, love where you work, because obviously it would show it. You know, if you don't like where you're at, you'll treat it like how you feel, but it's pretty good, man. And you've been professional. I appreciate you. Um, what's, what's your name? Uh, Lieutenant Chris Thacker. Lieutenant. Uh, batch number? Uh, 22. That's professional, man. Hey. If you see me or anybody that does what I do, I'll send her the same thing. We're out there for you guys as well when we record because you guys could do it a lot of good PR these days. And a lot of what is on the web and on the news is kind of just showcasing the fuel by the Apple. Right. And just like we're in center repeat, and that's what get people turning against you guys. Right. So the only people that you can trust is the people that take it upon themselves to show transparency and say, hey, these guys, 95% of them out there, 99% are good officers that respect people right and treat them respectfully. But because they don't see it, they don't believe it. Right. So that's why I do it so they can see it. And nobody's peeing me. No, I'm, nobody got their hand in their pocket. I just want to show people what true professional looks like. And you guys are doing pretty well. I can tell based on your demeanor and how you readily ID yourself that it's something that probably flows down to the ranks. And um, I appreciate that. My, my viewers love the interaction, love the see interaction with, with law enforcement and how you guys behave. So it kind of just show how you guys, at least in this era of the state, very versed on the law. And you guys really are about upholding law and not feel. That's the other thing too. I'm not sure if you do, but I'm hoping you guys in the era, that's, you know, that's what you're about, not enforcing people's feeling, right. but law, because you're law enforcement. Just if somebody says they feel comfortable because of what I'm doing, you sh that, sh that shouldn't carry over to me where you're trying to infringe on my rights because somebody feel comfortable I'm taking video of them or I'm open carry. You guys follow law, you know? So the best you do, you in the educate them. Say, hey, he's allowed to do it just like you do. So, you know, that's like me saying I don't like you wearing a blue hat. Right. So you shouldn't wear it. I mean, no sense. And then you guys trying to enforce it. Right. Sir, you got to take the hat off. Like, it's the same thing. If it's my right, allow me to do it. And you just educate them. And then they're like, because most people don't know. So that's why that ignorance comes from. But as long as you guys know and you let them know, that's you did your part. You know, you win on both sides. They learned something new and you protected the guys that's trying to show you guys in a good light as well. You know, so for the most part, people say if you don't want to be filmed, it's probably because you're hiding something. But I don't think that's true in all cases because some citizens don't want to be filmed generally. And that's because they feel like that's an invasion of privacy. Right. But at least for the guys in blue, he's allowed to do it. Let him do it. And as long as he's not trying to step into my space and right. obstruct. Some have tried to call what I'm doing obstruction as well. Say, hey, man, you're stopping me from doing my job. I'm like, dude, you can't use somebody exercising the right as obstruction. Obstruction is physical. If I'm just staying, I'll give you 10 feet and allow you to do what you do. You got to ignore me and do your job, man. You know, because that's what the definition of obstruction is. It got to be physical. And you can't turn a constitutionally protected activity into a suspicious activity or a crime. One final thing I want to leave you with. It's a question I usually ask other law enforcement when I run into them. What do you think a good cop worst enemy is? A good cop's worst enemy is going to be a bad cop. A lot of people get that one wrong. You know, a lot of people, well, I wouldn't say it wrong, but they still get it right, but right. The, the correct answer is really a bad cop. And, and I'm pretty sure you know the reason why. Because if somebody has a bad interaction with one cop, you carry that interaction with you, and you think all cops are like that. You know, so 
that's how bad cops get good cops hurt they get them you know heated and all that stuff so it's a good cop you can't come out and kind of just like report them or you know kind of show everything that they're doing wrong because it might get you in trouble at least you can still try to kind of curtail them the best you can you know because at the end of the day you have, you have to at least be able to sleep good when you go home so if you can't out those guys all the way you just kind of try to you know give them a heads up and just kind of like talk them in the dressing room and say hey man Bad cops aren't doing us any good. You know, you do this stuff, you're kind of tarnishing a reputation with the public. And one bad, it only takes one bad apple to spoil the whole bunch. And once you lose the people, that's it, man. There's going to be bad apples. If you know that one, you kind of try to, like, at least talk to him. At least, even if he doesn't listen, you can go home sleeping good. Night. Well, at least did try to, you know, put him in his right, make him know how to behave. And if he doesn't, then he'll suffer the consequence himself, you know, and that'll just reflect on him, not on us, because I did my part, you know, so um, there's bad photographers, there's bad people in every department, in every job, basically, so it would be illiterate to expect that, okay, our cops should be good, so I'm never with that defund the police, because it was the stupidest thing I ever heard, like, defunding the police, you're, de you're punishing the good cops more than you're punishing the bad, because that money, no, they can't, take care of the vehicle, they can't maintain stuff. It's like a lot of effect that people not thinking about and it's because of the narrative. They get programmed by what they're seeing. If you use one to stereotype the other, it's just like stereotyping our white person because of one. Yeah, that's, that's why I'm kind of not with that stuff and why I'm about the dialogue and using dialogue to bridge the gap and also show them, you know, that the majority of guys out there respect and if you try to push that narrative, you're only gonna hurt yourself right. because if they do defend them, eventually they're gonna shut down they probably can't afford body cam, so now you can't see anything that you would like to see. You know, something happened, you can't complain. You're, you said defund the police, that defund affects them medium to afford body cam. No, you can't, no, there's no proof to con counteract what you're seeing happen if they did something wrong to you. And on top of that, if they can't run the vehicle, you need a life saving issue, they can't come to you because they have run down vehicle because of what you requested. So, yeah, stereotyping the police makes no sense. Because you're doing that, you would you wouldn't want somebody to do that to you. Say, oh, one, you know, one five percent of the white population is bad, so all of them's bad. Right. You know, five percent of black people thief, so all of them thief, and treat you like such as the same thing. But when you get program as high as that level of program that the media is using, you don't really think logically. We need more people like you, maybe you know, not say about the video, but more yeah. people that got any questions. Come to talk to us. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. Talk. We're normal human beings. Exactly. Like Again, oh, I got a shaky hand. I appreciate you taking the time. No you know, and um, you have a good one. All right. You Thank you, sir. Be careful out there. Thank you. Alright guys, so so far so good, didn't have an issue and you know I've been here for I don't know how long and I haven't had any issues. Nobody tried to mess with me, if, uh, the actual opposite, you know, everybody I talked to was very professional and respectful, cordial, you know, uphold my right, didn't try to violate them. So I give this place a pass man, another pass. You know, I tell you guys, man, don't pay attention to what you see on the news and have you believe in that, you know, everywhere it's all about violation and non-respect to the public and cops hate you and all this stuff. And that's why I do what I do, to show what I'm, what I experience and to prove, you know, what's real, what real Americans and heroes look like, you know, what the majority of the country looks like, you know. And it's not what they'll have you believe in, like, the, you know, the country's burning down and, and 10 step backward and it hasn't changed that much since the 50s. Um, bullshit. Bullshit. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video today and um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Mr. Wicked Shot, out.